I thought it was interesting this week that Jim Chalmers, inflation hasn't been the target ban of the RBA 2 to 3% for 10 years, but Jim Chalmers now turned around and said, you know what, it's going to happen by the end of the year. Um, I think that was a great community communication strategy going into the budget because that's all anyone's been talking about, right? And when we look at the detail tonight, we're going to look for those measures that actually gets him, gets him there. And he's talking about fiscal measures, um, you know, rather than just relying on the um, mon in a monetary sense from the RBA. But how big a risk is that for him, in your view? Would voters forgive him and the Albanese government if, it, if the timing was a bit off or didn't happen? Yeah, look, I think, you know, any pronouncement like that comes with risk as much as it does opportunity. Yeah. I think there's a few things around that. The first is it's those kinds of big sort of, you know, macroeconomic targets, you know, we're going to get inflation back into this band, just washes over people. That's not what they kind of want to be hearing right now. What they want to be hearing is where is the coherent plan that addresses all these things that we've been talking about. Yes, inflation is a huge part of that, and that's a big problem. And you know, good, good that they're working on it and getting it under control. Good, but where does it fit in a broader narrative of what this government is trying to deliver for us? Um, and as I say, it's just to make life better, not necessarily even as as good as it was. So I think there's a, there's an issue there. The other issue is people are just so disengaged. There is no anticipation or sense of you know anticipation around this budget a lot of this stuff that we're sort of you know we talk about in the in the political bubble and those sorts of things just don't register so you know we've done focus groups since since charm has made that statement and mm. there's no there's no impression it hasn't touched the sides because of this, this sort of degree of disengagement so they've got to even if they can do all those things that i've just articulated they've still got a communication challenge of how do you get that through yeah. to an electorate now that is so despondent, so disengaged? I know I keep on banging on about this, but I thought as a, a values a proposition for them to halve the number of um, mental health visits that you could claim on Medicare at the start of this government was, I think, really damaging, uh, to be honest, particularly with young people so engaged uh, in that space and so worried about it. I, I don't even know whether there's going to be a big spend here on mental health in this budget, but... Would, would that go a long way, do you think? That's the kind of stuff that people notice because that's the kind of stuff yeah. that, that impacts them and impacts their family members directly, you know, not, not sort of statements in the media or, or big, bold targets, you know, that, that have no substance behind them. That's the very kind of tangible thing that, um, yeah, absolutely, they, they need to be doing those sorts of things, you know, yeah. reinstating or, or even expanding, you know, what was there before because okay. mental health has become this 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 chronic problem yeah. and people link it to other issues like family violence um right. you know people link it to capacity to work it has an economic impact so hmm. it yeah absolutely it's kind of one of those it has become a core problem 